Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back to Mystics of Prayer. Alhamdulillah, it is the 21st of Ramadan today. And inshallah, you and your families are all keeping well. And I hope your fasts are going as well as well, inshallah. May Allah accept all of your efforts. Before we begin, I'd like to request um, five times Ammo Yujibu for your brother Haider Hasnay. So we can all just recite. Without taking any more of your time, inshallah, I'd like to welcome Sayyid uh, Muhammad Hashmi now and gets right into the lecture. Audhu billah min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Bari al-Khala'iq ajma'in wa ba'ith al-anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. ثم الصلاة والسلام على النبي الأمي العربي الهاشمي الغرشي العبد المؤيد الرسول المسدد الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأراضين باب القاسم مصطفى محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته respected brothers and sisters may Allah سبحانه وتعالى accept all your fastings and all your efforts in the last night, Laylatul Qadr, and today, and insha'Allah, he elevates us to the highest levels that a Shia believer can ever reach, insha'Allah, Rahman. First of all, today I was informed that uh, Brother Sayyid Haider is doing Alhamdulillah much better, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, and I'm very hopeful that he will return to this discussions, and insha'Allah, and he will continue this uh, discussion, but for now, he's just still uh, feels some weakness inshallah but i hope that inshallah he will uh, he will recover fully in the following days and nights we were talking about the intention the aniyya inshallah this session and the next session uh, we will finish the discussion regarding aniyya and inshallah we will uh, go into the next topic that we need to talk about uh, regarding the mystics of prayer. About the intention, we said that uh, intention is the most part, most important part of Salat. And we need intention to connect our physical acts to the spiritual elevation that we're going to reach and achieve during Salat. And then I said that Intention has some levels, and the first level is the pure intention in our mind. For pure intention in our mind, I gave you two tips there. First was the knowledge, and second was what? Remembrance, a dhikr. But then we raised this question that it is so hard for a neglectful person, forgetful person, like many of us, like me, to concentrate just on the uh, times of Salat. So what's the solution? I'm always distracted. I'm not mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during my day. So how can I be fully mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during my Salat? Here I said that greatest scholars of Islam, great teachers of akhlaq, great urafa of Shia school of thought, like Mirza Jawad Maliki at Tabrizi, Sayyid Ali Qadi, Imam Al Khomeini, Sayyid Muhammad Hussein Tawatabai, Allah Tawatabai, they have a process here. And they derive this and, and they could uh, understand this from the Quran and Sunnah. And that is the process of muraqibah, al muraqibah, the observation. I said there is al musharata preconditioning, then al-muraqib, observation, and then what? Al-muhasaba, self-accounting. And uh, as I said, you, you know, in the beginning of your day, you decide to 
refrain from anything that you know is against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then you control yourself all hours of the day, in all the activities, in all your contacts, in all your jobs, okay? And at, at night, before going to bed, you start accounting yourself. What happened to me today? This, this was seen, no, this was the right job to do, this was the wrong job to do. Tonight, inshallah, I'm going to uh, explain this concept of al-muraqaba more by using one of the letters of Allah Tabatabai, and then inshallah, I will talk about the consequences of al-muraqaba, inshallah rahman there is a letter from Allah Tabatabai, and just in case today I uh, was in Haram of Sayyidah Ma'asuma, Salamullah Alayha, and I said Salam to Sayyidah Ma'asuma on behalf of all of you, and I visited the grave of Allah Tabatabai and recited Surah Al Fatiha on behalf of each and every one of you who are joining uh, this session, and asked him to help us, inshallah, on this letter and on all his instructions that is written in his book books as i said it is beautiful inshallah i will give you the translation inshallah there is a 22 year old young person who is disappointed from every other teacher of akhlaq and other teachers and scholars somehow in his place and he starts writing a letter to Allah tabatabai i'm just uh, i don't read the farsi version of the letter which is the original version and it was written in 1977 or 76. He says that, first he says, Salam to Allah Please listen carefully, it's so beautiful. The, 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 the letter and the response of Allah He says that I'm a 20, 22 year old uh, young person. And I think that the only person that can answer my questions is you, referring to Allah Tawatawai. I'm living in an atmosphere and, and, and in, in, in an environment that the desires and temptations and dreams surrounded me. And I'm the captive of my temptation in this place and in this situation that I'm living in. And it caused me to uh, being stopped from uh, taking the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't have any movement. I'm just stopped here. I have a request, he says, I have a request. Please tell me what exactly should I do to, uh, to then I can overcome my nafs myself and uh, I reach a level that the salvation rules on me and upon me, not my nafs. And then he says that I don't want nasiha. And says, it means the normal recommendations. Be good, be pious, be a good person, be a good person. He says that I don't want these things. My mind is full of these recommendations, yes? I need practical instructions. He tells Allah Muhammad, I need practical instructions. And then he says that like the instructions that you, uh, was, you were given during the time you lived in Najaf and he refers to Allah Qazi. And then he says that, please, very beautiful, please, if you can answer me, please write a letter back to me. And if you see that I don't worth it, it's worthless to answer me, no problem. Just don't laugh at me, he says at the end of this letter. Just don't la laugh at me and destroy this letter like nothing happened. Okay, now the response of Allah Tabatabai. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Salamun alaykum, Assalamu alaykum. This is, the response is exactly the process of al-Muraqaba. He says that to achieve success and to be able to reach to the purpose that you wrote, it is needed for you. First, to have a serious decision. You must be serious. You must be firm on this. Then you need to do tawbah. Repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the first step, even before the al-muraqabah. 
First, we need to do Tawbah. Inshallah, last night, we all have done this Tawbah. And inshallah, 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 if we have done this, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we're just like now born from our mothers. Clean from our, all our sins, inshallah. After repentance, so, so it's a very good time to talk about al-muraqab, al musharat Then he says, after that, you need to farsi, be muraqibe wa muhasebe be pardazid. You need to have al muraqiba observation and then al muhasebe self accounting. And al musharata he now here not, not, notices that. So how do you do that? Allah Muhammad says, first when you wake up at morning, have a serious decision, a serious decision, a serious intention that anything happens during the day, anything happens. You will only seek the pleasure and happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that incident. Anything happens. You want to treat you with your family, you're going to have some business, you're going to just go chilling with your friends, you're going to study books, I don't know, liking people on Instagram, disliking people, yeah, anything. Before that, ask yourself this question. Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala satisfied with this work? Then Allah Tabatabai says that if you do so, you will see that in every move, in, in every step that you want to take, you always observe that that step, if that step has a benefit for the life after the death, for al qiyamah is this work beneficial for my qiyamah or not? This is the consequence of al muraqaba And then he says that, and, and, and then you will refrain from anything that, will be, that, that, that is harmful for your qiyamah. Anything. And he says that, keep this feeling, keep this state, keep this situation for yourself until the night before you go to bed. And then, please, we can, we can act, we can, inshallah, uh, implement these instructions of Allah Taala. Then he says that before going to bed, for just four or five minutes, he says in Farsi, and I, I know I'm aware that you had Farsi classes. Chahar panj for four five minutes, just four or five minutes. Just think about what you have done during the day. One by one, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. And he says that each work that was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give thanks to Allah. Say Allah, Ya Allah, Alhamdulillah, I could do this in line with your pleasure and happiness. I could do this to seek your nearness. And if you have done anything wrong, exactly in that time, do astaghfirullah rabbi wa atubu. Do astaghfir. And say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I did it wrong. Sorry. This is your night. Okay? This is the end of the day. Day and night. He says, Allah wa do this every day. From the time you receive this letter, do this every day. And he says, let me first read the Farsi version and then translate to English. In Ravish, agar che dar baadi hal sakht va dar zaaghi nafs talkhast vali kleed nejat ur astagaris. This method, this process, although this process may seem somehow difficult and not sweet, it's it's hard to do that at the first days. But you need to know that this is the key of salvation and redemption. And then he says, this is, this is also recommended, highly recommended. Every night before going to bed, if you could recite the, uh, the chapters of Musabbahat, Surah Musabbahat. We have five, some people say six. Surah, which starts with Sabbaha, Yusabbihu, Sabbih. Surah Al-Hadid, Surah Al-Hashr, Surah Al-Saf, 
Surah Jum'ah and Surah Tarabon. And he says that if you couldn't recite all these chapters of Quran, all this Surah, just recite Surah Al-Hash. And brothers and sisters, it's, it's a very short chapter of Quran, Surah Al-Hash. I think it won't take more than five minutes to recite this Surah, Surah Al-Hash. And he says then, and after 20 days, write me a letter and tell me about your feelings and about your situation. And this person, this person who has remained unknown for many people, even until now, one of my teachers said that this person is one of the best persons in spirituality now, and he is alive. This person who wrote this letter to Allah Ta'ala Ta'ala. By just what? Implementing the instructions of Allah Ta'ala. Was it some, something very hard or difficult or weird or some vikr, you know, a, a thousand times this, a hundred times that? No, no, no. Just al-muraqaba, al-musharata, al-muraqaba, al muhasara And brothers and sisters, it changes the world for you. It changes everything. And I want to just talk about some consequences and results of the process of al muraqaba Here is a book, and again, I'm not sure if there is an English translation for this book. Risalatu liqa'illah. Liqa'illah. This is a book by Mirza Jawad Maliki at Tabrizi. He talks about al muraqaba al-Musharat, al-Muhasaba in this book as well. And then he, he talks about the consequences of this action. Consequences of this prof, process. Consequences of this mindfulness. And other scholars also mention the consequences of this uh, mindfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this way. The first is gradually you feel that you can feel the pleasure and the joy of ibadat, supplications. That is very beautiful for the human being to feel the joy of salat, the joy of dua al-kumayl. Because you know, now when we want to recite dua al-kumayl, we always you know, have an eye on the final page. How many pages is remained from the dua? 20, 19. 18, 17, yes. There is no pleasure. It's just a very hard work to do. <laughs> Same goes with the Salat. But if you do al muraqaba the first thing is you will gradually start to feel the pleasure and the joy of Salat. Why? Because the process of al muraqaba purifies your soul purifies your soul and the more your soul is purified the more you're ready and you are readier to what to receive the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to feel these blessings to feel these blessings and you will feel that you will feel that inshallah every one of us inshallah will feel that so one of them is that the other thing which Mirza Jawad Maliki Tabrizi mentions in his book is beautiful dreams. Because in dream, <coughs> our reality, our soul goes to Alamul Mithal, inshallah. Next night, I will talk about Alamul Mithal as the final uh, session of the discussion regarding intention. Your soul is released during the, 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 the sleep is released from this material vault and goes higher and up. And the more this soul is purified, the more beautiful scenes it can witness. And that is not something, you know, little. Because our yes, I'm back. Because our dreams is a manifestation of our soul. The more we are aware, the more we are purified, 
the more beautiful scenes, insha'Allah, we can witness. Yes? So the second consequence is what? Is our dreams. Great people could get to witness Ahlul Bayt and Rasulullah in their dreams. They could do that. Inshallah, we can achieve this. Pleasures, inshallah. What is the next and even more important consequence of Al Muraqab, Al Musharat, Al Muhasab? Is what? Is gaining new kind of knowledge. You remember this verse of Quran? Alladina jahadu fina lanahdiyannahum subulana. And whoever strives in our cause, lanahdiyannahum subulana. We will guide him to our ways. Ways of what? Ways of guidance, ways of salvation. So the more you act according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in line with the Allah's instructions, Allah gives you more knowledge. And you know how? What was Friday Night Circle and other organizations? Sometimes maybe many of you were not familiar with this kinds of sessions and with this kinds of friends. But somehow, maybe you think accidentally, but it's not an accident. You were, you know, in your place, or you were just, you know, uh, searching the internet. Somehow you could know some brother or sister doing something here. And it leads you to sessions and to lectures and to meetings. Do you know it was accidental? No. This is the consequence of your good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you new knowledge, new kind of knowledge. And now if we inshallah start this this process of observation, inshallah, we will get greater knowledge. And this is just the knowledge of dunya, the concept. If we continue with this way, we will be benefited by what? By spiritual knowledge, by real knowledge, by knowledge which can be only what? Witnessed. This is not about thoughts and understandings. And inshallah, Next session, I will talk about this. And the other consequence of this process of observation is what is the topic of our discussion? Purifying our intention. If anyone can, you know, uh, follow this steps of Allah Tawatawai, as he said, he cannot make intention during the Salat for other people, to please others. It won't happen. Automatically, you won't be able to do that for anyone else. Except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we can stream in the sea of observation and al-muraqaba, inshallah, we can uh, somehow modify our intention, improve our intention. And you know, what is the riya and, some, uh, and show off? What is the riya? Riya is I want to present myself to other people because I think that they, are, they have some abilities and they, they have some, some social positions that if they admire me or help me, I will be successful in my life, okay? This is the VVVV thinking system that is just, just got us stuck with what? With this dunya, but with our observation and being mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you gradually feel that you are released, released from other people, disconnected. It doesn't mean that you are going to cut all your ties with other people. No, your ties with many will be stronger, but not for their pleasure, but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. And this is automatic, as I said. If we follow the instructions of al muraqab al-musharata, al-muhasaba. And don't undermine those beautiful dreams and those beautiful feelings. If, inshallah, in the night of 23rd of Ramadan, the third uh, night of Qadr, you had some moment of feeling of something. Don't lose it. 
الا ان في ايام دهركم نفحات الا فتعربوا لها you have some special occasions during your life don't lose them i think it's a narration from amir al-mu'minin stick with them in that night if you have that feeling to recite abu hamza al-thamali inshallah next night do that if you feel that it's very you, you you're in the position that you really want to cry for abi abdullah al-husayn and have a ziyara for him, imam al-husayn do that in that time don't lose that moment because these moments is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and is the consequence of our past. Like the moments that we wasted, it is also the consequence of our past. Many nights that we wasted, many salat and prayers that we missed, many fastings that we somehow destroyed by backbiting and other things. This is somehow the consequence of our past. So inshallah rahman by observing this process, inshallah, we will be uh, hopeful to uh, reach higher levels. So, from tomorrow, and it's a practice, please do that, it's so easy, it doesn't take any time. <laughs> from tomorrow, the moment we wake up, preconditioning, al-musharata. During the day, the observation and self-controlling, al-muraqaba. And at night, inshallah, tomorrow night will be the third night of Qadr. Start self-accounting. And think that this, this process is, goes before the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By doing this, you maybe have a very busy day in university, in your job. You just have the time of your wajibat, five times of prayer. Okay, you can't do any mustahabat, no problem. But by this process, always in, and in every moment, you're doing mustahab. And what is the mustahab? The dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's try to do this. And as Allah Taala said, after 20 days, if, if one really and seriously takes this, this path, something big will happen. Unusual will happen, inshallah. Rahman. And I, I'm not saying that we must, you know, wait for something unusual, something, you know, some as so-called spiritual disclosure. No, sometimes it's in, in our, in, in, inside our heart. Sometimes this big result is our intention. But this will happen definitely because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us, الَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُلَنَا Insha'Allah rahman we will follow this uh, discussion next night. Insha'Allah, I think in the next session, we will finish the discussion regarding uh, the intention. Insha'Allah, then I, will talk, I, I want to talk about the presence of heart during the Salat, and then inshallah, I want to talk about the Al-Qiyam, first physical act of Salat, and inshallah, we will talk about uh, the uh, Surah Al-Hamd, the Surah Al-Tawheed, and I don't know how much time that we have, but inshallah, I will uh, try to cover some parts of these discussions. Insha'Allah rahman wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammadin wa alihi al-tahirin wa assalamu alaykum.